Welcome back to part two of a video series about Courtney and I turning this 1994 Sturton Stevenson M1078 into the ultimate snow blowing machine. You've already seen the snow blower that we picked up and today's project is gonna to be to start figuring out how to mount our engine onto the blower. So here is the beast of a commercial snow blower that we're gonna be mounting on the front of our army truck. It's eight feet wide, four feet tall. This blower is actually intended to be mounted on the rear of a large tractor and powered off the PTO. So our first mission is to figure out a new way to power this blower. I decided to use a dedicated engine mounted on the blower to power just the blower and the blower's functions. I wound up sourcing this 2.2 liter GM Ecotech, well, I bought the whole car, but this is what's left now that we're done. And the original plan was to use both the engine and transmission and just take one of the transmission output shafts and feed it into the POTO shaft. But that was gonna mean that our engine was mounted somewhere all the way back here and make it so that this snow blower was just way too long. So in trying to come up with a new solution, I came up with what I think is a better idea. The new plan is to mount the engine right about here and just drive this blower using pulleys and V-belts. <laughs> so I think step one is to start mounting the engine. Already busting out the CAD. So this represents a drive pulley. Down here on the PTO input for the blower, the plan is to have a 12 inch diameter pulley. And then right here coming out of the crank of the engine, we're gonna have a three and a half inch diameter pulley. Plan then is to have a series of three V-belts that wrap around this pulley and around this pulley to drive the snow blower. When the engine drives at 2,500 RPM, that should be 750 RPM on the PTO down here. The snowblower is meant to work either as a 540 or a 1,000 PTO uh, blower. So 750 is right in the sweet spot. We can either rev the engine up or down a little bit, depending on what seems to work best. I'm not gonna lie, this whole project kind of terrifies me a little bit, especially when I start looking at how big all the pieces are on this blower and how heavy they are. There's a lot that could go wrong, like a lot. <laughs> so this is the shear pin coupling that sat right here and the drive shaft from the tractor came in into this and transmitted the power into this gearbox. And the idea here is that there's two bolts here and down here. And if you jam up the blower somehow, those bolts can break and allow this to rotate freely so you don't further damage the blower or worse damage the tractor. But I need a way to put a pulley on here. Pretty sure the part I'm gonna try to machine weighs more than the machine. I miss owning a <laughs> real lathe, but we're gonna find out if this thing can do the trick for us. On your toe. <laughs> right on my toe. Now we have to put that in this little <laughs> death machine. <laughs> What's your confidence factor? Optimistic. Not even gonna put a number on it. <laughs> Here we go. Forward, on. All right, so that's what we've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is that it's working. I'll let you know tomorrow when it's done. <laughs> well, the day has finally come. Courtney and I woke up this morning to no power. We haven't really been paying that much attention to our battery levels, but I guess they got low enough that last night the batteries died. So time to go fire up the generator. Our batteries died because we haven't seen the sun in like two weeks. <laughs> Whew. We've got warm temps today. It's like 30 something degrees. Oh. There is like a ice layer on top of pure powder. It does look like the solar panels are doing a good job of shedding yesterday's snow though. 
All right, let's see if uh, Old Faithful will start. We've been delaying running this generator as long as possible because we had such cold temperatures for the last few days in the negative Fahrenheit. It's really hard on the diesel engine to try to start at those kind of temps. But it's warmed up, so let's see if we can get her started. Let me go here. Nope, that's not good. And dead battery probably because of the cold temperatures. Because this generator is 24 volt, I'm gonna be using two 12 volt jumper packs. Ah, much better. Hey! I wasn't really sure what the process was gonna look like to get everything back up online because we took our batteries all the way down until the inverters turned themselves off due to low voltage, which we've never done before. But all I had to do was fire the generator up, waited a couple seconds, and boom, we're charging again. So let's go check things out inside. Okay, all of the batteries are up online. We got a uh, multiple low battery alarms that for some reason didn't go to our phone, so I'll have to look into that. Now, just because we're having to run the generator, that doesn't mean that our off-grid system isn't working correctly. Here in North Idaho, for about two months out of the year, we have this, lots and lots of gray, where the solar panels just can't produce. But the solar panels are just one small piece of the system as a whole and having the large battery array and the big inverters means that now we can run this generator for about five or six hours at its peak efficiency, meaning that we make the most electricity per gallon of diesel burned, store that electricity in the batteries and then use it as we need it over the next week or so. So overall, still really happy with the way this system has been performing this winter. And we're looking forward to giving you an update on our overall thoughts closer to the end of winter. Merry Christmas. <laughs> So the real reason I had to get that generator up and going is so that I could make Courtney her Christmas morning latte. We'd like to thank GrowWatt for sponsoring this video. GrowWatt is a well-known name in the solar inverter industry who recently entered into the portable power market. During our deck build, we tested out their Infinity 1500, and now we have the opportunity to try out the Vita 550. With a 600 watt output capacity and small footprint, this unit makes an awesome backup power solution for unexpected scenarios. When you run out of power or they shut your power off, you'll have a convenient way to charge your phone, run the internet, and power your lights. Charging this thing is super easy. Right here on the side, we can simply plug it into the wall for a fast charge. I think it takes about one and a half hours or we can use up to 240 watts of portable solar panels. Plus, the lithium iron phosphate battery inside this thing is rated for more than 3,000 charge cycles. Another feature that I think is really cool about this unit is the app connectivity. I'm able to connect to it via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and monitor and change settings through the MyGrow app from anywhere in the world. At only $429, this unit has all of the features of a high-end power station at an incredibly budget-friendly price point. So to get your own Vita 550 or to learn more about other Grow Out products, head to the link in the description below. And make sure to use the code GROWVITA550 for an additional $30 off your order. So thanks again to Grow Out for sponsoring this video and allowing us to dream big. It took me almost three hours, but I was able to get done what I needed to get done on this part here. We're still waiting on the pulleys I ordered, so we're working off of drawings, but here's the plan. This three belt pulley is gonna center on this lip here that I machined to get it centered on this hub. Then all we have to do is drill and tap for the bolts to hold the pulley on, and then the blower side of the pulley setup is done. Here, Holy. In the last video, we got a lot of questions about why we weren't just driving the snowblower off a PTO driven off the transmission of this truck. And that's actually the first route that I explored. I thought this is gonna be easy. This transmission already has a PTO output. All I have to do is adapt a hydraulic pump onto that. Well, it turns out that it's not that easy. And here's the problem. In order to drive the snowblower fast enough to actually effectively clear snow, I'd have to have the RPMs of the engine up pretty high. But when the RPMs of the engine are up high, 
the truck goes fast. So even in the lowest range gearing, this truck would still be moving way too fast to be able to effectively move snow. I couldn't come up with a way to have enough hydraulic horsepower and be driving the truck slow enough to effectively blow snow. Plus that means that down the road, if we wanted to put this blower on a different piece of equipment, we'd be able to do that. Good morning. It's a bit of a stressful morning for us. We're actually headed into town at 6 a.m. to take poor Bailey girl to the vet. Bailey actually tore her ACL. If you've seen her on a leash in our videos for the past couple months, we were trying to rehab it without surgery, but unfortunately it completely tore and she needs surgery. Of course, the weather had to throw a wrench in things and it has rained an inch since midnight on top of a fresh foot of snow. Do you think we're gonna make it to town? We'll see. It's pretty treacherous out there. a.m. Bailey is at the vet and now we have to wait around till 5 p.m. when we hopefully get the call that we can take her home. Oh, oh she's a big lump. Bailey girl. You look like a satellite dish. <laughs> we have a very groggy, very confused Bailey dog and we're gonna get her home. We got Bailey home. The cage is not to keep Bailey in. The cage is to keep Boone out. Boone. Boone. Do you need keeping out? I think she's happy to be home. I'm happy she's home and uh, it's going to be a long road, but I'm feeling optimistic that by next winter, Bailey dog will be running through the snow again. So after a lot of trial and error, I think I've got the engine exactly where it needs to go. Pretty sure this is exactly where the engine belongs and it worked out perfectly. Check out the clearance down here at the oil pan. I've got access to the oil drain plug so I can still do maintenance on this engine. I can still get to the alternator and all the belts back here, but it still sits really low and out of the way of the chute that the snow comes out of. I honestly don't think that the size of this engine could have worked out any better and I'm really happy with how it sits in there. So now it's time to get it installed. Time to make some motor mounts. I got the part done in SolidWorks, so now I'm gonna take it over to Courtney and she's gonna cut it out for me. So this is a CNC controlled plasma table. So Riley's making line drawings in his software. Then we bring it over here and we bring it into this software this software is where I'm telling it how to cut the part. So do you cut on the inside of the line, the outside of the line, um, lead-ins, all that sort of thing. So this is programming how to actually cut the part and then we're gonna export this into what's called G-code and then we bring that into the final software. Now our instructions are programmed and I'm gonna import them into the software that actually controls the plasma cutter. Now all I have to do is zero the table and tell it where to cut on the metal and hit go. And just like that, it goes from a drawing to a piece of metal that hopefully fits. I am pretty sure that this engine is now exactly where I want it to be. And I'll show you how I did that. This is the PTO input where we're gonna have the big pulley. And then basically I used this piece of square tubing to project 
the plane of that pulley outward to make sure that the flex plate on this engine was perfectly aligned with this plane. So I could rotate this around and basically measure from the backside of the square tubing to the face of the flex plate to ensure that the motor is perfectly in line and in plane with the PTO input. Normally an engine would be mounted with some kind of rubber bushings that allow the engine to move and uh, damp vibration so you don't feel them in the vehicle. But in this case, our engine is going to be rigidly mounted because we need to maintain the distance and the plane between the two pulleys that we're using. So there can't be any movement between the engine and the blower. I've got two motor mounts done. I would like to get at least one more attachment point to make sure that this motor is solidly mounted to the blower. It is solid. Like, I think it's gonna work. Hi, Bailey girl. How are you doing? Well, this is a Bailey dog update. It's been three days since her surgery. The last two days were pretty rough, even with her painkillers and sedative. She was in a lot of pain. And so I kind of have just been hanging out up here with her, making sure she stays calm and lays down. And um, luckily, starting yesterday afternoon, the swelling went down and she's feeling a lot better. It's a long recovery. We have eight to 12 weeks of this. Um, so we're all kind of just trying to get the hang of it. The good news is, is that she's a little more back to herself now. We are back at it with a very lofty goal of trying to have this engine running by the end of the day. It's time to move on to something that is very intimidating, but also very rewarding, which is wiring. This is the entire wiring harness from under the dash of the Sunfire. And most of this we don't need, but there are a few parts that we do need, like the ignition switch, the cruise control module, and I think we're just gonna have to start at one end and work to the other. But first you need to answer the most asked question on our latest video. What is it? Why are we building this when I have a skid steer with a blower? Well, cause I need to blow snow too. <laughs> We had this project in the works long before Riley found the skid steer. So then we kind of ended up with two snowblower options and then we decided, oh well, we're gonna build this one anyways because it sounded like a really fun project and maybe we'll just keep whichever one we like better. Or maybe we'll keep them both. Courtney's gonna help me go through plug by plug and remove the parts that we know that we're not going to use so that we end up with just the wires that we actually need. For example, there aren't gonna be any airbags. What? Do you want one? <laughs> All right, Courtney, what is your job now? It's late, but Riley is dead set on getting this motor running tonight, which would be really cool just to know that it's gonna work. So we are doing some very temporary things. So hopefully we can at least see this thing turn over tonight because that'll just encourage us to keep going. I'm way too excited about all of this to not at least hear it run. <laughs> okay, now I just need to be able to hook this into here. What's your job in this operation? Whenever we start an engine for the first time, Riley's in charge of starting the engine and I'm on standby in case something goes wrong. Nothing has ever gone wrong before. I'm still gonna be on standby. Fuel is hooked up, the radiator is hooked up. I think we have all the wiring plugged in. <laughs> we'll find out. I guess that really just leaves the battery. The computer just clicked when you did that. Whoa. Things are doing things. All right, so key in the ignition for the anti-theft system. And then this is the ignition switch from inside the steering column. <laughs> and in theory, when I stick this in here. Something will happen. And turn it, the car will start. The fuel pump turned on. 
Ready? Yeah. Nothing. Cordy just asked me a really important question, which is how does it know that it's in park? Well, it doesn't. And we removed all that stuff. So we're gonna have to figure out how to tell it that it's in park, but I have an idea. I find it hilarious that I'm plugging my laptop into my snowblower. There it goes. 2003 Pontiac Sunfire. The software that we have on the computer allows us to connect into the ECU on the engine and actually change settings and parameters. So I'm gonna go in and basically tell it to ignore a few error codes such as the transmission not being in park. And while I'm there, I might as well disable the anti-theft too so I don't have to worry about this key situation. That key is gonna fall in the snow the first <laughs> time you drive this thing. For the record, we have never had an engine fire up the first, second, or third time we've tried something, so. Is it gonna work? What do you think? <laughs> yes. Yes? Just like you're starting your car. Ready? Yep. Yeah, the, the starter relay is clicking. Why is it clicking? Hold it. Holding. Okay, so why is it there? Nothing here. I found the problem. We could hear the starter relay clicking. There was 12 volts coming out of the crank wire. I trace it back to the starter and no power. So I started taking the harness apart as you can see here and the wire from the starter relay and the wire that actually goes to the starter first go to the transmission where I assume there must be some kind of park neutral safety switch. So Courtney was totally right. It was a park neutral safety switch problem. We just didn't know where to look. All we have to do now, I think, is connect this purple wire to this purple wire, and we should be good to go. I think this is take three. What do you think? I think it's gonna work. Yeah? Ready? Yeah. That's a feeling that never gets old. <laughs> we are going to end on a very high note because that's incredibly exciting. We have no idea if this blower is actually gonna work, but at least the engine runs. Stay tuned for next episode where hopefully we take this motor and actually apply the power to the blower. See you next time.